Jaina, aka Young Ruler, <laughs> for coming for the, to take do an interview with us. Could you tell the Farid family a little bit about Jaina? Um, yeah. Jaina, um, let's start it this way. My name is Juvenile. They used to call me Juvenile Child, Youth of the Future. That was the name I was given in Harlesden by a man named Fuji, Fugitive, who was part of Java, where I inherited that name, I was the youngest guy around the set of people and that was around so they gave me that name and yeah it stuck with me for a while but over the years as I'm no longer a juvenile <laughs> people still keep calling me yo Juvi Juvi Juvenile so I said to myself I can't get away from this name yeah. so I can't change my name it's going to be too hard for me to try and make back a career with a yeah. different name so I said to myself alright cut it short take off the UV yeah. And just leave the J now. Okay, yeah. You know, and then that was still a problem <laughs> for people to it took pronounce. Took a while. It. Yeah. yeah. It was Janal, Janal. All kinds of stuff came out. Of that. <laughs> 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 but but how did you how did you become to be who you are today in the industry? Well, in the industry itself, it started. The, well, the whole journey started. I used to work. I used to be on a sound called Corruption. Mm -hmm. And Corruption sound, you had Shawnee B. Mm -hmm. Who's on BBC One Extra now? Yeah. You had PKG, you had Guppy Ranks. There was quite a few of us on the sound, you know, like the Youth Man Sound, Community Sound. Okay. And I went from that sound to Vigilante Sound, which had Sleepy, you had Sleepy Ivory, you had Rudy King, Tita Bantan, um, God rest his soul, who passed away, who used to work with um, Stingray. Mm. You had Bonnie Ivory, um, Axman. Quite a few people, Tiggy, Governor Tiggy, there was quite a few of us over there, Starkey Bantan. So I was over on Vigilante and then from Vigilante, Starkey Bantan carried me to Java. Mm. So then when I went to Java now, I was like, Java's secret weapon. I was like a, a juvenile, I was the youth man yeah. on the big man song, you know, with Sweetie Harry and Joe 90 them. So yeah, they used to carry me up and down the country and when the things get kind of to that stage where they got certain new artists on the other sound them and they're going on certain ways they used to just bring me out as the secret weapon yeah and just make the liquor you would kill them out you know yeah <laughs> yeah yeah so that's how the career kind of started and then it's like you had um in my neighborhood like what i said you had gappy you had you redman uk you had coming you had toby t the whole of them the, all of us used to part together sparky rugged all of us mm. so it's like my acceptance to java that's my crew yeah so my crew came with me yeah. So the whole of us was on Java basically. You know, it's true Java was in front of my house where I live. Mm. I get to I know everyone on Java Beaver, you know, and the rest of them. So it's like I kinda of got into Java more easier than everybody else. It's natural. Yeah. Mm. But that wasn't just your journey into No, nah, that was it? that was a piece of my journey. Within that same time Um, how can I put it? Within that same time I was doing reggae but I was, I wanted to be a rapper. Okay. So, I used to do beatboxing. Okay. So there was this guy called Jimmy, an Asian guy, who used to be a very good rapper, fast rapper. You know, being Asian and that, people were like into him and he, and he could beatbox good as well. So me and him used to do this combination thing, this beatbox thing and, you know, rap a couple words and whatnot. So every Sunday, we used to go, no, I'm going to have to rewind this story because I've, I've skipped up a big piece. Yeah. Stonebridge Park. I used to be at Stonebridge Park first because I was around Rough Cup mm -hmm. and Akugu Band. So we had a band called Burning Bush, which was me, Madeline Edgel, um, Titler, Kimon, who is the brother of Omar, mm -hmm. and a couple more of us. So we had the, it was like the younger band to the, to the Akabu who is who was the bigger band, I should say? Who was the established band? Yeah. Yeah. So we used to perform because it was the kids of the band and their, their family. So we used to perform at Stonebridge Park every week before Java and the rest of the sounds would play. 
And that's where my performance on stage really started from. Mm. Like the proper stage stage, not being on a sound. Yeah. Because we were playing with the band, you know, with the instruments. So then I had that experience and then I went to some to start. I guess I got a little bit older. I started going to where was it? White City Scrubs Park. Mm. Where were Scrubs is. Yeah. Yeah. Tim yeah. Westwood used to be there on a Sunday. Yeah. So we used to go there with Tim Westwood and an MC named Duke. Yeah, like, like Moni Love and them used to be in the country still then. And, you know, it was a nice atmosphere every Sunday. So it was like a, a training ground. Okay. You know, <laughs> of working with different crowds and being in different areas and whatnot. Mm. But then I went through, I, I will mention this, because this is something that I, I don't leave out of my career for the simple reason that people need to know because not everything that's good. Mm. You, you know, you have to go through hardships or pitfalls or something to, to, to learn yourself or know yourself or... Yeah. I went through a stage of not making music. Everybody started, General Levy and everyone that was on the sound started to record. Yeah. And Sweet Yeah, you got his song with Aswad and Scooby and them came involved and you know, beer stuff started going on. John Knight they started doing tunes and you had Robo Rex and all of them, fashion records and all that. And I I didn't know how to record. You know, I could DJ like Popa San and them. So like you give me one record, the record's done, I'm still going. They're trying to patch the record back in because I'm still going. Yeah. And I used to do lyrics like that, so I didn't know when to finish. Yeah. And I didn't know how to make choruses, you know, to make it... Laps. Yeah, to make it more enjoyable for someone. Yeah. It was just more like for just a dance all crowd that <laughs> loved the lyrics kind of thing. So that was, that was something that I had to learn, but I didn't want to learn it at that stage because I didn't understand the business. Mm -hmm. So when they was doing music to make records, to get money, to do whatever, I didn't want to do that. I just went to go on the sound <laughs> and be behind the sound and hear the echo chamber and, you know, yeah. that was all I was interested in. So I stopped doing music for many years. Okay. And that was like the break. And what got Before you, I came back. <laughs> what, got, what got you back in now? Um, I started producing rap music. Mm. That's what got me back in. Okay. Yeah, I started producing yeah, that, yeah, you've got an artist named Anthony Richardson. Mm. I started producing his son, Tone Richardson, who was a good R&B singer. And then I started producing another guy who they call Anna Domini, mm. Kane Marco, okay. who was his dad, I believe, is, is it Earth, Wind & Fire or Coolin' Again? One of them okay. he was you know, associated with, he's yeah. one of the musicians. I started working with them, which I should say, he's the brother of the owner of Uni Vibes Radio. Okay. Yeah. So I started working with him. So I had the rapper, I had the R&B singer and whatnot. And you know, I was rapping myself and we was doing a lot of music and I was doing that for years. Working with a lot of people, Mike JLC and all kinds of different people mm -hmm. in the rap industry. And I just, I'd, I made a, I made a mix CD. By then I made about 12 mix CDs mm -hmm. in rap. Which is online now. Yeah, so. Basically, the producing was what I got into. I mm. started a new team, which was called New Regime, because my mum had a record label, which was called Full House. Okay. That's where it all started. My mum and my dad opened the label, and the label progressed to become a record shop. Is it that? Gregory Isaac. Which, with opening, and my mother's sister part, who was the sister of Jawush. Mm. And what happened is we opened the record shop in Neesden, yeah, it's a prolific record shop. In between that time there, I used to do distributing. So I used to distribute like to Black and Red, mm. Supertone, yeah. um, Peckins them. You know, from when I was younger, I used to carry music to Peckins Daddy with my uncle Jawush from when I was about nine. So I continued the, the, the distribution part of stuff. You know, I had some African Museum music and some other stuff that I used to distribute and Satama Sagana stuff and, you know, different, different things and deal with Alta Nellis them. Yeah. Um, up at their record shop in Brixton and that. Uh, Reds Records. Mm. Um, Dob Vendor. Yeah. yeah, all of these places I used to go and deal with, you know. And then I actually got to deal with most of these people through Aswad's manager, Bull. Okay. Yeah, he sat me down one day and so I had about 10,000 records just pressed. And he just started phoning some people. Yeah, I've got this new Gregory Isaac here and Kevin Isaac. Um, I'm, se I'm sending somebody down there, just take 3,000, yeah? And <laughs> by the time he came off the phone, 
the 10,000 records were gone. Wow. You know, but I just I was just getting the dropping them off. Yeah. And then I just had to go back and collect money afterwards, but I was just dropping them off. And that's what kind of established with some of the other stores, like mm. the dub and you know, some of them other stores, HMB and some other places. But yeah, respect to Impro.com. Okay. So you started off singing mm -hmm. and then you became a producer. Yeah. And now you do the both. Don't you? Yeah, at the minute I'm doing singing, producing, I make videos, so I do a lot of editing okay. for a lot of people, even though I do for my own crew and so forth. Music videos? Yeah, music videos, mini films, adverts, mm. you know, you name it. I make, I make websites, I do mm. CD covers and stuff like that, so it's like, you know, media. Okay. So, yeah. And what's this company called? All right, one of the companies, I do I make clothes as well. This is my clothing company. The clothes is called Taylor Swift Clothing. Yeah. The group I'm in now, with me and Goofy, Russ and so forth, is called One Dream. Yeah. It used to be New Regime. New Regime has actually progressed onto One Dream. Okay. And all of us has got the same common goal. So it's One Dream, as you said, One Dream is all it takes. You know, the video business, we have One Dream 876 and we have Blank Canvas. Started off as Blank Canvas. Mm -hmm. and just merge the two. Okay. Just to try and keep everything unified, trying to get everything covered to the one dream and keep it that sort of way. Mm -hmm. But yeah, we didn't say that, you know, there's quite a few production things going on. Mm -hmm. Alright, I'm gonna take you back to your singing though. Mm -hmm. What was your first song? Ooh. First release song. Alright, then tell me released it in tell me the first written. First release song was I done it for Richie the Face, Ras Kwame mm. from BBC. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, I done it for those two. The producer was Richie the Face. The song was for Ras Kwame. That was me, General Levy, um, another artist named Super Sass. Yeah. You had Don P mm. from Brixton and uh, the guy that used to run Channel U, um, Pioneer. So the five of us was on the song. And there was a song called Whopping It, yeah. which they might be able to find somewhere. <laughs> You know, it was like um, all of us is on the chorus, and it's like whopping it, whopping it, whopping it, whopping it, whopping it. Big D, D, not kind of, I can't remember the full lyrics, <laughs> but I was more rapping on it, yeah, more than DJ. At that time, was I was kind of more predominantly rap. known for rapping, mm -hmm. so I rapped on it instead of DJ. Yeah, but that was my first release song. Okay, and you know we went to BBC One Extra the following day. Um, B no BBC. Is it like a bass lounge? Or was it, was it, BBC? not BBC, it was MTV Bass Lounge. Okay, I don't know it. Yeah, in, in Made of Bell. Okay. Where it's bass lounge, yeah, in Made of Bell, where you had like, um, at that time, you had Soul Solid and all of them. You had yeah, JD, yeah, 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 yeah. who was part of Soul Solid, but had his own career. You had yeah. JD and N Dubs, then what wasn't who they are today. Yeah. It was very small then, but they was there. There's quite a lot of people there. They're still about. You know? And we got entered into that that sort of umbrella. So it was a good look, because we got to perform live and, you know, with Raskwami them and everything can done the song and mm -hmm. good look. But the first written one was? First written one was, the first written song was a song I used to prolifically use on Java. It was um, called Come From Jam One. Because what happened when I joined Java is, when I left Vigilante in these sounds and I got carried wins, because Starkey carried me to Java, shortly after that I went to Jamaica yeah. for a period of time. So when I came back, I couldn't really speak my English good and <laughs> my ways had changed and, you know, I was so already good. wearing clocks and <laughs> silk shirt and rear, but now I've come back even more. It's been a marina shirt and yeah. head tie up and, you know, Shabba yeah. style and all kinds of stuff. So I came back with this lyrics called Just Come From Jam One, which they used to bring me out to do damage with mm -hmm. because back then you had more people doing like me need me sweep me off and do it me use me and for brush me teeth me call me him and I love it you know <laughs> them Englishy kind of style yeah. one of the ding one of the da da ding yeah. I was coming with me just come from jam one 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 and in a jam one be article than bonified than genuine than man yeah. but as a little you do know me reputation you know me talk like a shepherd and me look like a you know and I, when I came with that style there Everyone was amazed because it was just straight Jamaican. Yeah. They couldn't hear the English in it. Yeah. So I, I used to use that and that's what used to get me through. So really King and Ronan used to love calling me up. How did your family feel about your career choice? My family was happy with me doing music still. I was a bit shy in music though, you know. 
like, okay. yeah, don't get me wrong, in my house in Halsden where I lived, my house was like a predominantly known house in Halsden. Everyone in the music industry, reggae music in this country, yeah, mm. knows my house. Mm. If they're coming from that time of music and they know who I am too, yeah. you know, Vivian Jones, all of them people used to change on me nappy. You know, I know yeah. all of them, Joseph Cotton, all of these people from when I was little, yeah. little right, you know, all of these people grew up in my yard. Yeah. And then, so it's like, I used to see all of these people, but I know them as, I don't know the stars they are, mm. if you get what I mean. Yeah. I know they've got music you and people love their music, but they. I don't know them as the stars they are. I know them as the people that come to my house, mm. yeah. sit down and smoke weed and love and joke and all the rest of it. Yeah. You know, one day Bob Marley came there and, we was outside playing football and there was two kids pulling on my jumper Yo, look this Bob Marley, he's coming to the estate because he had that, um, remember he had that famous scarf he used to wear The red, gold and green yeah. one, the long one and just, yeah. he used to just wear it a certain way over the coat yeah. So as you see him and his, his locks is out and he's got the hat, the hat's right at the top of his head It's not on his locks, it's just at the top And he's got the, the scarf and he come into the yard And it's funny enough, I've never seen him before that but I wasn't above, you know. I already know you get to my house. Yeah. Because in my estate there, you must be getting to my house. There ain't no one else in there that, yeah, that, that does music like that. Because mm -hmm. don't get me wrong, the estate there, the block I was in, my mum used to live in, and the one facing, King Sounds was in. The next block facing was Alton Ellis. Out on the main road there, you had um, Prince Hammer and Rankin Jordan used to be a Rankin Jordan used to be at my house. This in house then? Yeah. Mm. Like when Fatty Boom and them something there was done. Anybody that knows the music and knows the thing, they can look on that and mm. see the cover. Mm. Them there look at you, then we were growing. Mm. And that roundabout, right in a prolific local park. I won't even mention it because who know it's supposed to know where that was. You see what I'm yeah. saying? Yeah. When Fatty Boom come out. Yeah. But yeah, there's so many people in the music industry around that area because Halston was predominantly known for music then. Yeah. You know, you had Jet Start the Road, you had School Road where they used to do all the dubs and all of the, the prolific music around there. So it's like it was a, you know, and then you had Rough Cut, that was up at Donovan Court. So it was like a, a real musical place at that time, you know, there's a lot going on. Mm -hmm. You had UT General then, you had Bobula, what's on um, Repeater Andre. Mysterious Definitely. girl. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, Bobla them, you know, you had Stoned who Stoned and Jet Star them a family who used to run Volcano Song. Okay. This is what a lot of people don't know. So Stoned yeah. them, yeah, he's a nephew of Jet Star them. Mm -hmm. And Daddy had them a brother. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. You know? Mm -hmm. I was going as far as to say Stonebridge was named after them. Palmer's Court, Fixerman's Court, Jeffrey's House, that's their names. Yeah. And that's the history of down there that a lot of people don't know. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but we won't get into that one. <laughs> <laughs> what do you tell the Fire and Family the name or some names of some of your hits? Um, I wish it could rain. You can give us a few lines. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> um. You know, I can't remember that one name. I wish it could rain. I saw it Pat Kelly. Yeah. It's a combination that one with Pat Kelly. I've okay. got that one, I've got Slave Master mm. with me and my dad. Yeah. I've got um We Just Come to Party, which the rhythm was made by um Room in the Sky. Yeah. Played by Vin Gordon and Mugumi. You really just gonna tell me names, you're not gonna sing one for me. Alright. Well, we just come for you have a little party, we don't want the trouble nobody. We just come for you have a little party, but why them a fight against Yadi, yo? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> you know? Why is music important to you? Music's my future, music and my life. Just like what that lyric says. Mm. Who were your influences during your journey as an artist? Influences. Um, Starkey Bantan was an influencer to me as well. He was a big influence to me, to be honest. Because Starkey carried me a lot of places. He had an artist named Scratchy Lass, mm. where he does, him and his daughter does this thing now called The Mindset. Yeah. Yeah. Back then, Scratchy Lass was a Java DJ. Okay. Scratchy was the one who used to carry us everywhere mm. as the youth them. Yeah. Scratchy don't leave me. There's no way Scratchy gone and not in Scratchy's car. He used to drive one gold BM, 323i. 
<laughs> scratchy, don't leave me. I said, that's how I know East London, Hackney Downs, all these places choose scratchy. <laughs> You know, um, Asha World Sound, Junior Chin and all these people, um, Jabba Do, Swiney White, all of these people I know through Scratchy. Okay. You know, Scratchy opened up the doors for us. Do you believe in the Most High? Definitely. And if so, how does he affect your work? He affects my work in a big way because I think without him I couldn't even write the things I write. You know, there's a lot of the times I tell people like my brain sick like me have alopecia, you know? Mm -hmm. Me have a lyrics when me say me give them lyrics, wrap it like a pita, cooler than a freezer, some bleach out on the pant up my giant then the geezer. Me not too like small care, but me love the seven seater. Use my brain so much it's like me catch alopecia hot girls, you know? <laughs> so it's like with him, it's like it, it's there's certain times I write a song, you know, and I have to sit back and look on the song afterwards because I'm saying to myself, I never write that. Where did it come from? You know, where did I come I don't think like that. Like, I'm looking on it and I'm saying to myself, wait a minute, you know, there's some deeper depths to you that you ain't tapping into. So, true to that, I start challenging my brain. Mm. You know, I, sometimes I make a lyrics where I know what I want to talk about. I could be waiting to talk about the button. But instead of going straight to the button, I'd come up with something like the fabric of the coat. Mm. Where you like, where's he going with this? Yeah. You know? <laughs> yeah. And I'll take it from the fabric of the coat where I'm, just, I'm telling you everything about the coat. Before but the coat sounds like it don't have nothing for fast enough. Mm. <laughs> you know? But that's yeah. the main highlight of the lyrics. When I get to the button piece now, is, yeah. Mm. Cause it's like I've got the button in my head already. I know what I want to say about the button already. So it's how am I going to explain everything else mm. to get to the button? Yeah. Cause what I've learned in music is there's ways of making good songs. You know, I don't say I make the best songs, but it's helped me so far in the sense of people. You know, it, it, it's fit into different situations. Some person say, "Oh, your song got me out of this situation. I was depressed," or you know, say, "Your song let me start." Me stop, me stop thief. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Me get married and we don't play a song and all the different stuff and it, it, it's made me feel good to be honest. I'm not gonna lie because I didn't think my songs would reach into those aspects. Yeah. I thought it was just a listening thing more than more than so. Yeah. You know, more than it really touched the soul of certain people, but with the music is like uh, but if most people that follow my career know that I've got different sets of music. Mm. I do foundation. Mm. I do culture music, or me the dance too. Okay. But you ain't gonna hear me swearing on my tracks mm. and doing things in that sort of nature. There's always a message in my song. Like mm. what I was getting back to now is what I've learned about music is this idea of telling a story, and at the end they get the understanding of the story, mm. or you ask a question. And at the end, you give them the answer. Yeah. Or, you know, along those lines, you can't leave them where when the song's done, they're like, wait a minute, so what was the song about? Yeah. Where's the message? Wait, wait, wait I go. Yeah. You know, it could be the worst song in the sense of you're talking derogative yeah. about females or gun or whatever, but the message is in there. Yeah. You know, the song with no message in there is like, what is? And the only person I see get away with that is Cartel. Mm -hmm. Because <laughs> cartel would, he would travel, we in the prison cell, lettuce, picnic, beta, <laughs> and he has it away, my dog. Mm. But it work, mm. you know, to work to the way he's doing things. It's true. You would jump from chocolate to lettuce to carrot to window to spliff, you know, myself. And, and what is the style what he's giving you? Mm. You just go on the way, my say. Yeah, it's true. <laughs> yeah, music is powerful. Mm. Would you mind sharing the current struggles you feel a recording artist faces? Um, the biggest one, bad mind. You can't get around that. That's the biggest one. Being in music is the worst, worst. I look at the camera and tell them it's the worst field to be in if you not have this and this. You have to strong. Because if you don't strong, you turn into something that you're not. You do things you don't want to do. You dislike people that you shouldn't. You know, you talk things about people you shouldn't. Mm. You go along the wrong circle when you should have been over there. Mm. You know, and, it, and it's, it's all of these things. And it's like a lot of the people that you'd think 
the grassroots of music, you know, in most cases, what I, I think, me personally think, because in the sense of the people I know and who I've come across, I can't talk for who I don't know or who I haven't come across, but who I know and who I've come across, what I've seen is the ones them that actually do more better in music is the ones where from the grassroots, from in their house, people are supporting their music. Yeah. If you got music playing in your house and your girl, she don't even have your thing of playing in her car. Mm. Hey, you're, 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 you're around the wrong people, mm. you know? <laughs> and it sounds bad, but that woman ain't for you in that respect. Mm. You see what I mean? And that's where it all starts, because that starts playing with your meds. Mm. Because if she's playing an Alkaline or she's playing even a Bucky Joe, you know, let's keep it English. Mm. She's playing a Bucky Joe or she's playing a Leroy Simmons and she now play your thing. <laughs> She now introduced the thing to her friend. Mm -hmm. You share a link and she's not sharing it. Mm -hmm. She didn't put a like on it. Mm -hmm. That's a problem, right? Mm -hmm. A big one. Oh, oh. Big, 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 big. Yeah. <laughs> you know? What about as a producer? How does that differ? As a producer, um, it's the same thing within the music. There's a lot of bad mind in this thing. So it's like, unless you rub shoulders with certain people or you know, you've got certain kind of links that you can get around them yeah. where your stuff's in their face and they can't get rid of it. You have a problem because they're gonna hold you down as much as they can. They'll try and put their favorite artists up who ain't no good. Yeah. You know, not saying that he ain't got no talent at all because everyone's got talent in their own right, but the situation of how the music's set now, he ain't the one who's rolling the ball. Yeah. His ball ain't rolling right now, but they yeah. still want to push female Oh. in the way all the time because they got a link with him you'll have certain people that will call a radio station and say yeah we have a new rhythm you know and i'll send a four cut the radio dj will be like you know what my show's kind of full up this week you know mm -hmm. i just got some stuff from goofy them and Ray Ray and whatnot yo forget about goofy them all of me here talk all of me here friend okay. a true, a true. all right now put them in and from this and now you who's actually been doing stuff and the other radio and the other radio and that DJ's talking about your stuff where it's actually supposed to go through that channel. Yeah. They've cut you over here. Yeah. So they've cut you over here. It looks like you ain't doing what you're supposed to be doing. But your music is actually in that position. Yeah. I see a lot of that. <laughs> you know. Imagine. What struggles have you been through? Um music or in life? In the music industry. In music industry, the struggle, the main struggle that I go through is people denying my work. Mm. You know, I'm one of the most prolific artists in this country. And I can say it on this camera, and if anyone wants to doubt me, we can go online together and play a tune for tune, our rhythm for rhythm, our work for work. I spit that still, video for video. <laughs> yeah? And none of you know I work like me. But the thing is, I'm not one of those guys to go out and box and yo, me had a rare rare. I'm not that person. Mm. What I would like though, is recognition for my work. Yeah. I see people nominated for awards. What have you done? Mm. When was the last time you did something that actually had an impact? Yeah. How you feel I get awards over everybody else who's actually doing stuff? You know, I've got trends on vinyl. That, 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 if they go online right now on Google, they'll see everywhere that the vinyl was, it's sold out. Yeah. Do you see what I mean? Yeah. All of that sort of stuff, but yet still, when it comes to nominees and certain things and whatnot, they like to go around people. What artists do you listen to? Um, I listen to all kinds of artists. Funny enough, the first one I'm going to start with is Kelly Clarkson. Yeah. You know, I listen to all kinds of music. I'm a person that's just into music. I'm not stuck on reggae, I'm not stuck on soul. I don't listen black music, mm. as people call it. I listen music. Yeah. So I don't see color when I listen to music. I hear talent and I, and, and I hear music, listen basically. Yeah. yeah. You know, when you hear a good song, well, when I hear a good song, I get goose pimples. My arms then just get full of bump. Mm. Yeah. Sometimes I feel like I don't want to cry. <laughs> I swear to God, you know, yeah. when certain things touch me, what I will come to my eyes, because I'm that kind of person. Do you see what I'm saying? Mm. Okay, I love music, I just love music, all genres. What have you got currently in the pipeline? In the pipeline at the minute, I've got, well, we'll start with, I've got the Joe Biden rhythm that's just come out mm. with various artists, Goofy Russ, Lion Paw, um, Hard Knocks, Killer B, which is a dancehall rhythm. Mm. Nice vibes on it, you know. 
hence the name Joe Biden is is to do with the the basically what's going on now kind of thing. That's why I named it that because it's gonna have that sort of reference. You know, mm. people are gonna see it for what it is. Joe Biden. Let me see what this is about. Let me see what it sounds like. Mm. Where then it's got that sound. But I got a, a track on there called Bad Like a Cobra. Mm. Where it's like you know the artist Skilly Bang. Mm. I use Skilly Bang style to show people prolifically that as an entertainer I can use different styles and entertain I just choose to use my road mm. do you see what I mean? because there was a time when I was doing music and certain people was like you feel so like Chucky Star you feel so like Ray Ray I don't want to sound like no one I got my own sound yeah. you know and now we've reached to this point now people are accepting my sound because I didn't switch I stayed with my sound even when my voice might have sounded like it's certain parts to them it might have tree and our cracker or whatever. To me, I wanted you to hear what I was putting in. I wanted you to know that my neck, my, my veins was popping out my neck when I done that little word or that verse. That's why I left it that way, you know? So it's not manufactured and it's, it's that sort of thing. But I've got quite a few things coming out. I've got a song called King on the Front. Okay. Yeah. Give us a line, come on. Um, I'll, I'll let you hear a little bit of it. More than give you a line. You will like it though. Very nice song. I've got King on the Front. Whilst, I, whilst I'm looking, yeah, I'll tell you what I've got. I've got King on the Front. I've got. We have the New World Order rhythm coming out. Mm -hmm. So then we've got the Midnight rhythm. We've got the New World Order rhythm coming. We've got the Joe Biden rhythm. We have the Miami Vice rhythm. We've got the Godzilla rhythm. Okay. There's quite a few things. I've got um, in January coming. Mm -hmm. I've got the Peanut Seller rhythm coming out, which has got Joseph Cotton on it, Dennis Brown's son. Liquid John, myself, Goofy Ross, there's quite a few people on it, you know. Okay. I've got the Calibre Rhythm, which is got my father and beer people on it again. I've got quite a few things coming out, you know, wow. because prolifically on the music, I gave, I, I put out a lot of music and then I was, you know, kick back for a while and do promotions and stuff. But then sometimes they come in like, when I look on the internet, I plastered the place. So I'm not seeing enough music to make me want to make more music. Okay. So there's a time when I won't put out nothing. I'll have the music there and I won't put it up because I want to see enough music out there. So then when I do put my music out there, it makes more sense. Mm -hmm. You know, when people just hear your voice or hear your voice or hear your stuff or hear your stuff, they stop looking at it mm -hmm. because it's only you doing stuff. Yeah. You know, yeah. so a lot of the time I'll pull it back just so others can put in so it gives me something to work right. towards. Yeah, I like to I like to hear something where it's not competition, but I like to hear stuff where it's like, what? Mm. And that them come with, mm. me I for going, I'm a lap. You know? Because you know you're for coming something good. Because the music's gone to that stage now where you've got to get it to play on that level. Yeah. So it's one of those sort of things, you know? And then it comes to music. Oh, there's the song there. Give me seven, give me seven, give me seven. people think I'm in a big, I'm in a barrow. This is the on the This is the on the contact with me through the website that we have which is www.yungrulermusic.com so that's youngrulermusic.com yeah Yankee Uniform November Golf <laughs> yeah. youngrulermusic.com or you can find us on 1 Dream 876 on the internet on Instagram you can find me at one young underscore ruler on Instagram. You can find us on Facebook at one G made seven six, or you can find me at J A Nile on Facebook. You can also find us on quite a few more platforms still. You know we're on Twitter, we're on um, TikTok, okay. we're on YouTube. You know, you know what I mean? We're yeah. on this your kid, um, video. Vivo, you know, we're on quite a few things, so you can find, you can find. Yeah, out there. Mm. 
Please feel free to make a shout out to your well wishes. Well, I wish everybody the best. And I wish everyone the best who wish me the best. You know? As we said, it's not a competition. It's the only saying all of us is out here prolifically doing the same thing. Music we say we love, music we say we like, and music is what we say we want to do. So, but all of my well wishers, I got a lot of stuff for you, you know, musically. Only for music to come. Music where you're going to love. You know, you're like we're on the quarantine style of life right now. We don't know when we're going to be back in the clubs. So, until that point, I'm going to give you music where you can party at home and feel good too. You know what I mean? So we wish the well wish them good. As me say, and everybody will wish me good. Even the one who don't wish me good, I wish you good. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Have a wonderful life, have a wonderful year, day, and a beautiful 2021. Mm -hmm. It has been an amazing on interviewing you. On behalf of Fire Red Station, we'd like to thank you. Fire Red Station, young ruler in the house, you see it, aka Jane, I represent you. You see it? This one going out to my mama. You see what I'm saying? Mommy told me that a lot will hate. Mommy told me as I you believe your life straight, no get caught up with reprobate. Clear your mind and elevate and dirty life no penetrate. Some will love, yet still some will hate. My voice and my style and try to emulate. But I'm original, so me can't imitate, irritate, can't box of food from a dinner plate. Born from a veteran, you don't have to rate. Born from a veteran, no one them cannot hate. Mommy told me not to lose the faith. Life it is not a race, but take your time, achieve and you will lose. Yeah. Mm. Take life with a pinch of salt and a butter taste No matter how the <laughs> fire it You see? Man born a school rule, I grow a school rule I born a England and go a school, yeah Me no drink every day, can't find me Nana booze, I'm on a king, and I don't like me, you know Be up on a slip, nah, <laughs> And a cabra and me sick up like a skilly bang By the time I make a tune I make a hit no sin again Prince will have to run again because them have to crown a king again Me only love the girls from age 12 Me sick a friend, skill with the pen Count 1 to 10, speed of light, different place Man gone again, then down a station at him farm again Run go tell your friend, hide the drugs, hide the skin Soldier upon the road again, me drive the car straight through the fence And my body don't get a den, me is not magnificent But same time and the music man is relevant Me get a hit up on the radio but me no spend a cent Me no stop, me is not no honest me better than Trump, I'm the president. Skilly bang, skilly bang, skilly bang, skilly bang, skilly bang. Skilly bang. Come on, them skill with the pen, with the pen, with the pen, with the pen, with the pen. But like a skilly bang, come on, them skill with the pen. When I watch none of them, one dream I wish at the trend, yo. 
sick with the style, them is evident. Body art is not the resident, born with intelligence, not with telesense. Sophisticated with no regiment, some man said them a friend and them a snake and them a shed the skin. Like a jughead with a dirty pin, run down. Body look sick and it's so supple gin, done now. Me stay real and me no beg a sense, stay out of the way in and me residence. No matter if me broken and no house and only have a tent. Me get super in a life in a me clocks, but I'm not a kent. Plus we big like a 50 cent. I choose Amazon now, buy me choose for 50 pence Support the act, don't pretend If you like the film, stay to the end Don't smoke your spliff bill again Girl with disease, true, she will shoot again Like a football game, you lose, time for win again Come on them skill with the pen, 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 with the pen. But like a skilly bang, skilly bang, skilly bang, skilly bang. Come on them skill with the pen, when I watch none of them one Jima we set the trend, yo Badder than a cabra, me sick up like a skilly bang From the time I make a tune I make a hit, no sin again Prince will have to run again, because them have to a king again Me only love the girls from age 12 Me sick a friend, skill with the pen, count 1 to 10 Speed of light, different place, man gone again Then down a station at him farm again Run go tell your friend, I the drugs, I the skin Soldier upon the road again Me drive the car straight through the fence And my body don't get a den Me is not magnificent But same time now the music man is relevant Forget a hit up on the radio But me no spend a cent